Hey everyone, it's John and today we're going to continue back on the Key Concepts video series where I take some IP written key concepts and break them down to give you a broad overview to help supplement your textbooks. Okay the hook, so in this video what we're going to be discussing is BGP loop prevention in both eBGP and iBGP. So with that said, let's kick on, let's do it. Okay, so let's go and discuss it then shall we? So the first key point I want to kind of draw your attention to relates to eBGP. Now, how does eBGP detect and prevent loops? Well, what it does, it will effectively look and scan to see that if it can see its own autonomous system number within the AS path of an advertised prefix, it will therefore assume that, hey, this network or rather this advertisement has already been in my AS and if it's leaving and coming back in, therefore it's actually looping round. Now, I understand this might be hard to just kind of conceptualise in your head, but when I draw it out, I think this will make a lot more sense. Okay, now with iBGP, that obviously, it can't use this mechanism because eBGP is effectively tracking the path of all the different AS's through which a prefix transits by using the different AS numbers. With IBGP, the AS number is always going to stay the same. So as a prefix is passed from router to router to router to router, the AS number will never change. So you can't use that as a mechanism to detect loops. So to counter this, IBGP has this kind of spin on the split horizon rule, which you would know from your EIGRP studies. And what the IBGP split horizon rule states is that if you receive an advertisement from an IBGP peer, you will not pass it on to another IBGP peer, okay? So what actually is the implication of this rule? Well, if you think about it, if a BGP speaker cannot really IBGP learn routes to another IBGP peer, how are all these routers going to effectively learn the routes? Well, here's the thing. To actually learn all the routes and to ensure a loop-free environment, what you've got to do is effectively mesh all IBGP peers together. Now, this includes, obviously, routers which are not directly connected. Remember, we discussed this in the previous video. Very, very often, the IBGP peers will not be directly connected, and this really is what it relates to. So how are you going to be able to peer with a router on the different end of the network with you? Well, you're going to have to route to it. So this is where this kind of synergistic relationship between the IGP and IBGP coming together. Effectively, you have OSPF or EIGRP run as an underlay just for reachability. And then once you have reachability, you can peer between all nodes in the network. Therefore, you can actually learn IBGP routes and you don't need to worry about reeling it because every single person in the actual topology already has the route from the original IBGP speaker. So the logical inference, therefore, is that as we scale out, as we get more and more routers, we're going to incur some serious scalability issues. And that is the real, real problem because if you have, say, 50 routers, you're looking at making about 2,200 BGP peers and that is just going to get exponentially worse as you get to 100 routers, 500 routers or 1,000 routers. So there actually are some advanced mechanisms to get around this called root reflectors and confederations. Both of them are outside the scope of this video, but if you're interested, you can look at my previous videos in BGP and see how to configure them as well. So with that said, I think we should look at some configurations and some examples and let's draw this out, okay? So let's go and do that. Okay, so let's first discuss the eBGP loop prevention mechanism. Now, before I do this, let's just look at the topology. So we've got three different autonomous system numbers. And what we're going to do is router six up here has got a loopback configured on it. And we're going to advertise that into BGP. Okay, so that's going to propagate out to its peers and stuff. Okay, now, before we do that, I want to draw an analogy for you to help you understand and conceptualize what's going to happen here. So let's say you're in the UK and you get a flight to Germany, okay? So when you land in Germany, what's going to happen is at the customs, they're going to look at your passport and stamp it, okay, with a German stamp. Let's say you then take a flight to France. So you fly from France to Germany and when you land in France, the French customs are also going to give you a stamp with a French stamp, okay? Then if you fly to Portugal, you get to the Portuguese customs and the Portuguese customs stamp your passport yet again with the Portuguese stamp. Now, if you fly back to Germany, when you get to the customs, they can look at the passport and see that you've already got a German stamp in your passport. 
Therefore, they can infer that you've actually looked back round. You've went to Germany, to France, to Portugal and back to Germany because they can actually look at that stamp. This is effectively what's happening with BGP here. So when we actually advertise this look back from this router, and I think it's all, I think it's 99, 99, 99 32. When we advertise that to our peers, let's just look at this one. What it's going to do is it's going to stamp it with 89 to say, listen, this was the AS it was in. So when it gets to this router, this router is also going to pass it on to its peer, but it's also going to stamp it. So it's going to stamp it with 53, but it will still have that original marking of 89 on it. Okay, now when this one gets passed round and this goes to pass it to here, it's also going to stamp it. So the path is going to be 89, 53 and 7. Now this router here is not going to accept that route because it already sees that 53 is in its AS path and that's its one. Therefore, what has happened is this one here has actually just looped round, okay? And what's really going to happen is it's going to learn it from this peer and from this peer. It's also not going to take this long path because this is effectively just a loop. Now, the same thing is going to happen with respect to router 7. So let's just look at this again. We pass it to our peer and we stamp it as 89. This one gets it. It's going to have 53 and 89. And then when it passes its peer down here, it's still in the same AS, so it's not going to change anything. But when this one tries to advertise it back here, it's going to advertise it with the stamp 89, 53. This router here is going to see the 89, realize it's the same AS, and it's going to infer that what's happened is it's been advertised from here to here and back in. This is a loop, so it will not accept it. So effectively, when it comes to router 7, it will only learn it from this path. It will not also learn it this way because that would be a loop. And same again with this, it will not accept the path back in. It will just learn it via here and via here. So the net effect is what we're going to see is all of these routers, if you actually do the, the calculation and work it out, oh, there we go. Uh, all of these routers are going to actually have two paths to get to this and that means effectively going in via this way and going in via this way. Now, when it comes to this router, this one will only have one path, okay? Because it's only going to learn it from this way. The only other way that can learn it would be through a loop, okay? So it, it will only have one path with respect to this. And this is exactly what we're going to see. And this one will not learn it from anyone because... It's the original originator, or that's a bit of a tautology, that is the originator, <laughs> and it means that this one will not learn it from any other source, so this will have no other advertisements, okay? So let's look at that in action and see how it looks when we actually examine the AS path, okay? So let's just go and do that. Clear the out, and go down here. Okay, so let's go and look at router, three, uh, router 6 then, shall we? So do a show IP int brief, and we can see we've got the look back 99.99.99.1. So let's go into BGP and advertise that. And do network 99.99.99.1 with a mask of a slash 32. And if we do a show IP BGP, we're actually injecting that into BGP now. So let's look at router 4 then. And remember what I said, it should have two paths. If we go to the written table, there will only be one. Okay, that's that one there but that's because it's selecting a best path based on the path vector decision process. It actually does have two actual valid paths and you can see that with these two different next hops. And this will be replicated for all these routers around here. Two paths, it can go in the top path or the bottom path really. So, go down here. Same again, two paths. Two paths. But again, once we get to router 7 in a wee second, this one will only have one path because it can only learn it from router 6. It can't actually learn it this circuitous way out of its AS and back in because it's going to detect that as a loop. So if we do a show IP BGP, only one path exists for this one. And this really is the BGP AS path prevention, loop prevention mechanism in action right here, okay? Okay, so let's look at an example for IBGP loop prevention. So we've got two ASs. We've got AS50 and AS77. Now we've got an EBGP pair in here because it's between two different autonomous systems. And within here, we're of course running IBGP because it's within the same AS. Now the way I've configured the actual neighbours is that I've done it 
not in a full mesh. I've done it more like you would do an IGP little SPF or something just to illustrate. So we've got a peer in here, we've got a peer in here, peer in here, and a peer in here, okay? So what's going to happen is we are going to have a look back on this router here, 99.99.99.1, and we're going to advertise that in, okay? Now, what actually is the IBGP split horizon rule? It states that if you have a route learned via IBGP, you cannot relay and pass it on to another IBGP peer, okay? So if you learn it via IBGP, you can't pass it on to another IBGP peer. So what's going to happen here? Let's go through it. This router is going to advertise that in via eBGP, okay? So can this router pass it on? Well, yes, it can because this router did not learn it through iBGP. So it's going to pass it on to its peers, quite the thing. So it passes it on to this one, so this one knows about it, and it passes it on to this one, and this one knows about it. Now, what can this router do with it? This router learned it via iBGP, didn't it? So what can it not do? It can't pass it on. It cannot pass it on, okay? So this router will not find about it through this way. And same again with this one down here. This router learned the route via IBGP, so it can't pass it on. So effectively, the net effect really is this router is left in the dark. This router will never get the 99.99.99.1 because of the IBGP split horizon rule. And we're going to see that. So let's have a look at that just now. Let's just close this down and advertise this. So we do a show IP and brief. We've got that look back there. Let's go into our BGP process. I think we're in, yes, 50. And we'll do network 99.99.99.1 and it's got a slash 32 mask. Nope. Oh. Show IP BGP. We're injecting into BGP now. So this router is going to see it. It's getting it no bother and it can pass it on because it learned it via eBGP. This one's going to receive it. Okay. Same again with this one. But again, because neither of them can actually relay it, this one, what does it have? Nothing. It will never learn that route. So how are we going to actually resolve this? So let's go back to the whiteboard. So let's think about it. Within autonomous system number 77, the only way you can learn about this loopback is via router 2. So in essence, everyone should have to peer with router 2 to get that information, which means that router 4 must peer with router 2. Now, they're not directly connected, but we can make them reachable by using an IGP. So if we ran OSPF between all of these routers, this one could reach it, therefore it could peer with it, Therefore, that would mean that when this router learns this prefix, it can tell its peer here, it can tell its peer here, and it can tell its peer here. And there is no need for anyone to relay information, and everyone is updated. So this is why in IBGP, you want to have a full mesh. So to complete that mesh, we would also actually peer these two together. So that means that no matter what the prefix is, the originator within IBGP can tell everyone in the network and there is no need to relay that. So let's demonstrate that with the configuration then, okay? So let's go into router two. If we do a show IP route, we can see that we've got router four look back of all the fours, therefore it's reachable. So let's peer on it and we'll do neighbor, all the fours, remote AS77, neighbor, all the fours, and we're gonna peer on our look back. So we'll do update source. And let's just do the same thing here. Uh, router BGP seventy seven neighbor all the twos remote AS seventy seven neighbor all the twos and make it update source look back. And our peering is up. Let's do a show IP BGP. And now we actually have that route and everyone within autonomous system number 77 is updated. Okie doke. So let's recap. 
Okay, so eBGP uses AS path to detect loops. If it sees its own AS number coming back to it in the AS path, it's going to assume that a loop has happened and it's not going to accept that advertisement. IBGP, however, can't invoke that mechanism because as routes are passed around within IBGP, the AS path number never changes, so it can't track it that way. Therefore, it's going to invoke an IBGP split horizon rule, which states that routes learned via IBGP will not be passed on to another IBGP speaker. Therefore, we're going to have to invoke a full mesh to ensure that everyone understands the routes and this is also going to present scalability issues which can be remedied by some advanced features such as route reflectors and confederations and that's it. So that's the end of the video on BGP loop prevention. Thanks very much and I'll see you guys soon.